dyeing and apparel dyeing and finishing plant, which is basically a part of Nishad Group. This is basically a continuous dyeing setup uh, dedicated for apparel fabrics, uh, working with uh, customers all over the world. The history of this company, I mean, uh, this, this dyeing plant is almost set up almost 22 years. Uh, so 2002, we started these operations and we are one of the best, I would say, in the world, one of the de best dyeing plants in the world. We have state-of-the-art equipment, um, most latest technologies. We are continuously developing and working into latest technologies in terms of making the process sustainable and working hard to keep our um, reduce our water consumption and greenhouse gases. If I go back 2018, I came to know about this rotor spray, which is a basically an application. Well, this company was promoted this, this, this system for uh, indigo spray dyeing. Basically, they were doing the spray for the, for the yarn. Uh, for indigo fabrics. They were sort of uh, promoting this technology for woven fabrics as well. But uh, initially they sold these machines to, to only uh, denim area. So where they were doing the basically the yarn dye. Uh, when I came to know about this technology, luckily, uh, I mean, I planned to go to Germany and went to see this company, saw the machine, looked at this, uh, the possibility how this machine can, can work can be a real alternative for the present technology? That was the key question. And what could be the possible challenges that we could face? The biggest challenge at that time was that uh, this, this, this whole equipment was, for, for fabric dyeing, it was only available in the lamp, lab form. There was no production machine working in the world. So for me, the, the, the difficult part was that this technology was absolutely I would say uh, new. Ultimately, we realized that there is a potential. There could be some challenges, there could be some problems, possibilities, but keeping in mind that whenever you, you want to try any new thing, there are always challenges. And if you are ready to take those challenges, only then you can, you can make it successful. Initially, we had a lot of challenges with this system, but I think over the years, last two years we have been able to learn a lot understand how this system works and I think this technology which has made possible to make the continuous time more sustainable and uh, reduce the carbon footprint. The difference between this this system and the conventional system is we, we have a pet dry, pet steam process for continuous dyeing, which means that for dyeing you use for continuous, you have, a, you have to apply the dye, which is called petting, and then you have to do the, the, the drying process where you have the, the, the thermosol machine. And then, of course, which is followed by pet steam process where you apply the chemicals and then you steam it and then wash it. So this is basically a two machine application. Now with this technology, the advantage was that because of spray, so what we were doing is petting the dye. So instead of having this thermosol machine, which is, which is a one complete whole machine, we could replace it with rotor spray. And replacing the rotor spray means, rotor spray is relatively a very small machine. Uh, if I were to give you the numbers in terms of power consumption, the, a thermosol machine could take power up to 65, 70 kilowatt per hour, and this machine only consumes five kilowatt per hour. So there's, there's a huge difference. And of course, the, for me, the interest was this power savings. Of course, this is followed by, if you have thermosol, you have to have the heating system, you have to burn the gas. So this complete machine running, so there was a lot of savings for us. So that's why we decided to move with this, this machine. We had cold wet batch dyeing, which is the most economical system to do reactive dyeing. But the challenge with that system is that you can do only cotton fabrics and you can do only reactive dyeing. 
With this technology, the advantage is that you can do reactive dyeing and you can do wet dyeing as well. It's a different system, but at least you have the flexibility. It's been like three years and we, I can tell you that this machine is running 24-7. It is giving us results as good as the, the other process. We are able to save almost 35 to 40% of our power and, and gas. And not only that, that is one savings, but on the other hand, we are able to reduce our carbon footprint drastically. Chemical consumptions overall saved. We are able to save the salt, which is essential for the other process. Otherwise, salt is is one of the key elements in reactive dyeing, which is not good, uh, let's be honest, uh, because ultimately you have to, it goes to the wastewater treatment plant and you have to treat it. That's the crux that we are able to save a lot of uh, energy and make the process more sustainable. In Nishak, we do almost 5 million meters per month. Um, and out of that, I have the flexibility to choose what kind of colors I have to put on this equipment. Sustainability is a key thing these days. So you have to ensure that whatever the technologies that are available in the market you're continuously trying to improve and make your process sustainable. This is not only for, for, for customers, this is for even for us as country. We have to ensure that we whatever we are producing uh, is sustainable. We are able to save resources with our, within Pakistan. Uh, we are able to resources for keep our, uh, if we are able to save water, this is, this is good for Pakistan. So for us as a company, Sustainability is besides our customers, which is our important, but we, we as a company have most uh, interest in sustainability and working hard always. And that's why when I came to know about this technology um, and when I understood this, then the first thing that was really important for us as a company is the sustainability and we want to ensure that whether this is, if this works, then for us, that is the biggest uh, achievement and that's why we went with this technology. This system we are using for, for, for continuous dyeing. Now with this technology, you are able to eliminate one complete machine and replace it by a rotor spray, which is a very small machine uh, in terms of financial investment. I would say it is 30% of the price, okay? It saves uh, energy, uh, reduce the chemical uh, consumption. So it's, it's a win-win situation. So for, for, for that, at this point of time, we are using this technology for continuous time. I think it's, it's a revolution, uh, one word. The way this technology is moving, okay, because again, you are able to save um, water um, energy, which is, which is the most important thing. And then you are able to get similar results, similar quality standards of the fabrics without any compromise, okay? Uh, so important thing is for us as dyers, uh, the, the most important thing for us is to produce fabrics without any compromise on the quality, okay? And uh, any new technology uh, which where we are not compromising on the performance of the, of the fabric, we uh, that is that is one of the things that we are always uh, keen into to, uh, to 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 make it work so for us this technology is is the is the is the best thing to 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 move into and this is in my opinion could as well be the future
Very interesting question. Uh, I think that is the key thing that everybody wants to know. I talked about a reduction in power consumption, reduction in uh, natural gas. What are the savings? It means that we are able to reduce our carbon footprint by 1,331 tons. Okay, so that is the biggest savings for us uh, in terms of, and this is only with one equipment. So if we are going to add another equipment, that means that this will be doubled by the time the second machine is starts running. I most likely, if if I were to take out the COVID, uh, which lo we lost almost one and a half year in during the COVID. So if if um, they had no COVID, probably we would have paid off by now, in my opinion.